What's up Wolfpack, Cole Gregg here, and today we have a long-term review for you on some Olin suspension bits. Uh, up front on my Norco site here, we have the RFX 36, it's the M2 version, and out back we have the TTX2 Air Shock. So what we're gonna be doing today is covering a lot of the riding characteristics. Uh, I dove into a lot of the details on this fork and shock in the unboxing review. Um, really just wanna kinda of get nitty gritty on how this suspension changed the behavior of this bike compared to the DVO or the Fox suspension I had on it and originally the Lyric that came on this bike. It's seen a lot of suspension parts. All right, so let's clear out some of the details up front on this fork. It is the RXF. 36 air version. This fork also does come in a coil option. I opted for the air, just a little bit easier to adjust when I'm changing from jumps to you know bike park laps, things like that. It is the 170 millimeter travel version. It is offered from 150 to 170 in the 29 inch modeled air fork. Uh, there is more options for the, the 27.5 inch fork than there is the 29 inch version. For air pressure, I am running between 110 and 115 PSI in the main chamber and always pretty much keep that ramp up chamber at 125 PSI. As far as compression goes, I am pretty much always running this in completely open. Very rarely will I put it in the, uh, the trail mode or the, the climb lockout mode. There are a few cornery trails that have literally no bumps that I will put it into that second setting. Uh, but overall, it's spent the majority of its hours in that open setting. For low speed compression, I am generally running uh, dead center in those 15 clicks, so I am like six to seven clicks out from fully closed. I uh, did experiment both up and down and found that, that kind of right in the middle was where I liked it with the air pressure I had um, and that ramp up chamber. I do run pretty much exactly as far as air pressure goes is what Olin suggests, but I have that ramp up chamber maxed out for my weight. Uh, I really like a fork that ramps up hard, as you can see. Haven't used all the travel in quite a while. I like to leave that and just find out where, where that comes in on the trail. Overall, these settings for me give it a nice supple feel off the top with a lot of ramp up and I would say really good mid-stroke support. I actually prefer a little bit softer um, off the top uh, or that, I don't mind the fork to dive a bit, I guess. Uh, I've just adapted kind of my riding to suit that. I really like it to feel buttery off the top and the SKF seals on this have performed flawlessly. I did take out the foam rings and give them a couple cleanings throughout the test, but the seals remain the same. I would say uh, the amount of hours I have on this fork now, it's probably due for new seals, uh, but so far so good. I have changed the oil twice in this, super easy to do, really user serviceable at home. So how does this fork feel and perform out on the trail? What does it do to the bike? Well, in my humble opinion, it makes the bike really lively, but still gives you that confidence when things get rough. I like that fork to be really soft off the top and hammer really hard at the end of the stroke. As far as comparing it to like say the DVO Onyx that was on here before or a 36, it's right in the middle. Um, it doesn't have that harsh feel that I feel 36s have off the top, but it does have that nice DVO softness off the top that they they offer. Um, as far as ramp up goes, it doesn't ramp up, uh, or sorry, it ramps up better than the Onyx, uh, but not quite as good, I would say, as that 36. Um, with the volume reducers, I feel like it's, you get a little bit more tactile feel in, with ramp up. This, with the air chamber, really kind of just guides you to the end of the travel, which I'm becoming much a fan of. So just to dive into a little bit of nitty gritty on this fork, it has the TTX 18 damper cartridge that is found on the DH38 fork. It has been reworked and you know made for this single crown trail enduro fork. It provides a really smooth compression feel. I would say the for every click you get, you get a noticeable feel, but I haven't found the compression adjustments to be harsh. So overall, at the end of the day, if I was in the market for a new fork, the RXF 36 is at the top of my list. For me, it provides the small bump sensitivity, the ramp up, and now after being on this fork for many months, it is extremely reliable. I have yet to have any issues. Like I mentioned, I have done some lower service. I've cleaned the foam rings in the seals. The, the SKF seals are the ones this fork came with and have been performing flawlessly. I do use the WPL fork boost from time to time just to get that extra little bit of sensitivity that I really enjoy. All right, so let's go ahead and move out here to the back of the bike. We have the TTX2 Air Shock. 
This is a 150 millimeter travel with a 52.5 millimeter stroke shock on this Norco site. To get into some of the details, the shock has a three position high speed compression lever with a climb or lockout mode. Uh, the lockout mode is a little bit softer than, than most, so it gives you a little bit of sensitivity on some of those climbs to get over the roots. Uh, for me, it pretty much lived in the open setting. Uh, I did mention previously, talking about the fork, how I sometimes use the middle setting on some extreme flow trails where I know there's no bumps. Uh, that was also the case out back, but realistically, I think I've used that middle setting like three times. <laughs> it really just lived in the open setting. As far as air pressure goes, I am running between 190 and 200 PSI, depending on what kind of trails I'm riding. If I'm on more of the rough, gnarly stuff, I'm gonna be down at 190. And if I'm on more flow or, or jump trails, uh, that will be ramped up to 200 PSI. So as far as volume reducers goes, I didn't change anything from Olin's. The shock is as is for volume reducers. For my weight and riding style, the, the OEM spec volume reducer worked really well. Aside from the high speed compression lever, you are also given low speed compression control and low speed rebound control. Uh, both of those adjustments do need to be used with an Allen key, which is both good and bad. You're not gonna knock it and change, change out your settings, but you also have to have a tool on you to make any on trail changes. One of the big things I noticed when coming from the original Super Deluxe Air, I had an X2 and also a DVO Topaz as well as a DVO Jade on this, is this gave me kind of the best of all worlds. It has a nice supple feel with good ramp up, but is also lively. Uh, when I had the X2 on this bike, it felt kind of plain Jane, dead, not super playful. Um, this relishes more of the RockShox feeling out back, super playful, but when it comes down to damping, it's super smooth. For the low speed compression, I am running 10 clicks out from fully closed. There is 16 options here for you. Uh, I did find that unlike the fork, uh, every click really made a big difference. I noticed every two clicks, I could really actually feel it on the trail. Okay, so let's talk rebound. So the TTX2 Air offers seven clicks of low speed rebound control. When I got the shock, I found that I actually couldn't get it slow enough. Um, I don't know if that's attributed to the linkage on, the, on this Norco or if it just wasn't the right tune for me and my riding style. Uh, I generally like a little bit slower rebound. And it just so happened I did have an issue with the shock. I cased a very large jump and after that the compression dampening was just off. Didn't feel like it had any and the rebound did absolutely nothing for me. Sent the shock back to Olin's, they fixed it, gave me a new rebound tune, and since then it's been absolutely flawless. And that was on my third ride on the shock, so it was pretty new. Again, this was majorly user error. It was like a 25 or 30 foot step down that I just, yeah, I did not have enough speed for. So I, it's hard to fault Olin's for that, but I didn't want to make it clear there was an issue out back. Uh, up front, no issues the whole time. And ever since then, uh, the, the new rebound tune and whatever they did to solve the problem uh, hasn't been an issue since. So how does this rear shock make the bike feel? So most notably for me, it made the bike come alive. Um, I've had numerous shocks on this setup, um, as well as numerous parts and a whole vast array of suspension bits to test and play with. And so far, this TTX2 has made the bike just a joy on the trail. It makes you want to hit those side hits. Um, I've had this frame for a long time, so I really know how it reacts in certain situations uh, and come to expect it to do certain things. And I was able to push further and further with this suspension setup than I have in the past. It made this bike ride how it wanted to be rode. Fast, hard. It's a really capable bike, and this suspension setup just takes it to the next level for me. Um, as far as rear shocks go, this is my favorite one to date. Like I said, I've done the X2, I've done the JDX, I got the Topaz T2 Air, um, and then the original Super Deluxe Air this bike came with. Uh, I haven't tried any of the like, more niche stuff like Push or EXT, um, or even any of the Marzocchi stuff, but of the shocks that I've had on this bike, this is by far my favorite, um, and hands down would be at the top of my list if I was looking to upgrade. I do have one complaint, and I don't know if it's just the frame matching with this shock, but the the Schrader valve to put the shock pump on is so close to the frame and it takes a lot of effort and patience to get it on that first thread. You just gotta do these little tiny movements to get it on. 
Um, and that's just, I mean, they didn't design this shock specifically for this bike. So maybe your bike doesn't have the, uh, the seat post or the, the seat tube right there and it won't be an issue for you. Seriously, if you're in the market, don't look further. I, you know, I, I love tinkering and doing stuff and it hasn't been a real set and forget setup because um, I do like to tinker, but if you are someone that's set and forget, this will suit your fancy. It does take some time to get that fork balanced, I would say. So you're, you're dealing with two air chambers. It's just different. Uh, if you've never experienced that before, it will take some time to get used to and figure out what settings are right for you, uh, as it did for me. Um, but I haven't touched the ramp up chamber other than just checking to make sure the pressure stays at that 120, 125 range. Uh, out back, again, I, I haven't changed anything other than if I'm riding, you know, jump trails. So with that said, that's all I got for you. Uh, if you have any questions on this stuff, please feel free to reach out in the comments below. If there's anything specific that I missed that you're looking to know more about, or if you just want, want to have a chat about it and, and settings and all that kind of fun stuff. I got lots of notes to go through with different trails and riding styles. So feel free to drop us a comment below. And until then, we'll see you out on the trails. Control that that extra air volume has, or we're on a trail. Oh, you're good, man. You can come through. There is a trail that runs right in front of the camera. Oh, cool, my Just be aware, it's not the easiest thing to shred. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. So what we're gonna do today is, is that a coyote? Oh! What is that? A beaver? Ah, whatever, that's a weird looking animal.